last time with Check the Effects on the Smart Rail series. Today we're going to be going over something that I've been meaning to do for quite some time and that is Smart Rail Systems. Yes, Smart Rail Systems, this is where you have a completely autonomous minecart train. I'll be honest with you, I have never ever saw anyone develop a system like this. A truly Smart Rail System where you have a minecart train which behaves like an autonomous vehicle. This is what I like to call a cargo train. This type of configuration is what I like to call a passenger train. In either one of these configurations, the lead cart here is the brain of your train. This is the one that's going to contain all the information about your train. Can anyone figure out what I just built? These are item filters. Uh, another thing I almost forgot is I'm going to need a chest for this particular uh, tutorial. And I'm going to put my chest right there like that. So that's that connected. Next thing you can do is you want to bring that into here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go get our anvil and we're going to rename our stations here. So our, 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 what we can call these are tickets. Simple enough. Now you're going to need at least four or five of these to start off. In your lead cart, guess what you're going to go? Yeah, we're going to put one of our tickets in here. So next we're going to go to station number one. So we're going to go one, two, three, and then we have our fourth cart up there. Put in station number one ticket on the lead cart. And then we're going to put this one down. There it goes. And it switches. So now, and I'm going to put my iron ore in one of my minecarts with a chest in it. So my iron ore is there. I'm going to put station number two in here. Okay. Put station number two. There it goes. Your rail switches. It goes there. And see... Over here, here is your iron ore, it's still there. Now the lead card, of course, it dropped off the iron, the ticket back over there. Uh, now you may be thinking, hey, look, check, we still have our items that keep getting dropped into here after the train goes by. How is it that we're going to go over multiple intersections if we don't have a ticket? Well, that's for the next tutorial. Hey everybody, it's Check the Effects coming at you with another Minecraft tutorial, and today we're continuing on with the Smart Rail series. Last time we left off where the train was able to have the binary brain switch the rails according to whatever ticket it was holding. But that ticket ended up being in a chest which would not continue on with the train. Today we go over on how to get that ticket back into the lead cart so that it can continue on into the next intersection and make a similar set of decisions. So without further ado, let's get to the tutorial. So here we have our previous setup and uh, we made a little bit of a change here. There's a ramp that you have here, but uh, essentially everything else is pretty much the same. Uh, all we have to do here is have the ticket put in the minecart and then have it go. But the thing is that the ticket would end up being stuck in this chest. Now, uh, as, a proof of, as a proof of concept, I've decided to extend it off there. We have a working system there that will actually return the ticket back to the lead card and continuing on its way. So we have one intersection here and we are calling this one here Station 1, same as before. As you remember here, this led to Station 2 and 3. Well, if we continue on here, look what we have here. Here's Station 2 on its own and Station 3 on its own. So let's go on and see what's going on here. How are we going to get the ticket from the chest here over into the lead cart? Well, we're going to use another mine cart with a chest in it. So first thing we're going to do is get ourselves the stuff that we need. So we're going to need some detector rails, power rail, regular rails. We're also going to need redstone comparators, redstone repeaters, redstone torches, redstone dust, your basic building block, one that conducts redstone current, as well as a hopper, a sorry, as, as well as a few, couple of hoppers or so, uh, some buttons, also your mine carts with the chests in it, and also a mine cart. So you're also going to need your tickets, which I have there. The filler blocks, of course, have already been put into your binary brain. We're calling this part, this little section here, we're referring to this as the binary brain because it basically makes one or two decisions, either go left or right. Okay, so that's this section I'm referring to is the binary brain. Okay, we've only built in the previous tutorial. 
So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to take the um, you know, let's, let's start it off from uh, this side here. So first we're going to do is take out this chest, but let's put this here and we're going to put this off like that. Okay, then we're going to build this up like this. Okay, and we're going to temporarily take this out. Okay, and as you can see, there's the hopper right there. We're going to take a comparator and put that in like that. Now what we're going to do is put our block back in place and put your rail back in like that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that out for now just for, because I want to show how this thing works. But also what I'm going to do is going to take a rail, unpowered rail, and stick it right in there. Okay, I'm going to bring this out and put a regular rail in there so I can reorient that. You're also going to want to have a block here. I've already seemed to have placed one over here. So this is going to be another block that's going to be placed right over here. Okay, That's going to make sure that the minecart with the chest in it ends up going in the correct direction, which is only that way, and not having to go beyond this. You don't want it falling off. Um, next, we're going to do is we're going to take the current from this, and we're going to have to bring it into this here. Now, we have to get the power into this block. So we're going to make sure that we have a repeater, because it's going to hard power that block, as well as pull any power that comes into this block from this redstone dust. Also, we're going to do is put another block on top to make sure that this redstone dust doesn't interfere with our item filters. So let's see what we have here. We have our comparator, which would power this block once an item is in this item hopper. And that would power this redstone dust, which powers this block. And behind here, you're going to have to take this one. I don't want to take this one out, but behind here, we take the block out. That will power this redstone repeater over here, which is pointed into the block that is below the comparator. Okay. And then with that block receiving power, it will receive power into this powered rail. So if I go ahead and put any item into here, you'll see that the rail turns on. Perfect. So that means we can put our block here back, okay, like this, and put our rail back on there. So when the minecart comes over this and one of these item hoppers picks up the ticket, it goes into this hopper, and then we'd also have a minecart with a chest in it sitting right here. The item would then go into the minecart with the chest in it after the comparator had been activated because it had detected the item in the hopper. Uh, just one thing we want to do also is uh, make sure that we got a little bit of delay on this guy over here. Okay. So what's going to happen here is that your minecart train is going to come across here, drop its ticket into one of these item hoppers or your item filters, that will then send the item through these hoppers into here or from this one into here, triggering either one of these to make a decision, or either right or straight in this case. So next thing it's going to have is that once the item gets into this hopper, the comparator on the other side is going to activate and then send power all the way down to this block and into the powered rail, which would then cause this minecart with a chest in it, which what already have received the item, the ticket that is, in its uh, inventory to just shoot off to its next destination in order to get the item into the lead cart. So where we want to have our next stop for this minecart with the chest in it is going to be right over here. So we're going to need a hopper, put that right there, okay, and we're going to cover this up because we want to make our build look nice as well. Now I'm just putting oh this as a demonstration as a wall that's there okay that we can use. Uh, we're also going to put another block here and put this a little higher. And now we have to get our uh, comparator over on here. Right and just to show you guys that this does work if I go ahead and put an item in here you'll see the comparator turns on because the comparator can detect 
if there's an item in this hopper through a block. So that works just fine. Next, what we're going to have to do is add in a latch. So let's go ahead and build our latch. So put this over like so. Like that. This goes like that. This goes like that. Then we're going to have a redstone torch. Redstone torch. And a repeater here. Repeater there. Like that. Take off a block here. Take off a block here. And there we go. We're going to put your redstone dust like so so when that means that when this one turns off this block here or this redstone torch that means that we're going to want to have these powered or when this redstone torch turns on we're going to have this powered uh, one thing i forgot is our buttons so let's go ahead and put those in so one here and one here actually not not there over here right because they have power on underneath later on let's put this up like this put a redstone block uh, a block uh, or building block there rest on dust over here now if we go ahead and turn this on here and there you go you got power coming into that let's go ahead and turn this one off okay and if we put our item in here there we go it turns on let me take your item out and then we're going to go ahead and take this out like that now we're going to have to put in our rail that extends all the way to where that minecart is. So let's put this in here, put a uh, block in here, and we're going to go ahead and put a, uh, well actually this one goes here like this. Take this one out and then put block, 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 block like that. Redstone torch there. And then we would have this come all the way out like that. Okay. Okay, so, so here, okay, let's take this guy out, pull him out, and start building a ramp. Actually, let's bring, build a ramp a little bit closer to the other bigger ramp. Let's pull this back a bit, and go up, until we're at the same level as that one there. So let's do it like this, pull this all like that. There we go. Take these blocks out because we don't need those. And then take your redstone torch, put that in. Okay. Now we're going to put some redstone, uh, some hard rails going up here, like that. And then some regular rails going all the way to here. Okay. So now we're going to have some other hard rail here. Now this is being powered by that thing over there, so you want to ensure that it's getting some steady power. So I'm going to stick some a redstone torch underneath as well, because otherwise when this starts flashing, this is going to be affected. So you want to have a steady redstone torch going into this block to power these rails. And then I'm going to put some regular rails over here like this. If you want, you can actually take this out and just continue on your redstone, uh, your powered rails by doing like this and take that out still works like that but I'm just going to put this here for the sake of this, of this tutorial because you know maybe it could be some distance away that you have this ramp right depending on what it is okay uh, also in when you're building this particular ramp here remember that you should have it like about four uh, three or four spaces away so three regular rails after this your uh, hopper your uh, item filter over here then a powered rail and then power rail all the way up regular rail regular rail and then power rail all the way down up to the last inclined uh, rail which will be a regular rail here and then in 1.13 there's some new quirks so i we just got 1.13 recently and i pulled this created this design uh, well actually i started working in this design almost two years ago so there's been quite a few updates ever since which is why i have this and Basically, what we have to do is make sure you have power about three or four power rails before this now, and then after the turn, make sure you got about five or six rails power rails going on either side of the intersection. And the reason for that is to make sure that the passenger minecart doesn't fall behind or get any bump back from this minecart with a chest in it. Okay, the other minecarts, the minecarts with a chest in it will be fine. It's the passenger minecart that you have to worry about so that the train doesn't fall apart. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and test this out. We've got our track already, and uh, we, yep, that's already. So let's go ahead and test out this portion here. I can just take any old item, put that in there, push this up, and there you go. And there we go. Our train, uh, our uh, power rail turns on. So, and if you go ahead and take a look here, you'll see that you have your item returned into that, into the hopper. So, the next thing we have to do is be able to turn this power rail back off again. Okay, so we always have our manual controls that allow us to do just that, but we can't be doing this manually. Well, we want this automated. So, let's take a detector rail over here and a detector rail over here. We're going to take a block from underneath the detector rail like this. Oops, wrong with spot over here. This block has to be immediately under the block that has the detector rail on it. Okay, so immediately under that one. So let's mark this so I can see where it is. Like that. So two blocks like that. Now, we're gonna have a meeting of the mind, so to speak with these two blocks, uh, see if I can, uh, I'll try and navigate through that. Uh, you know what, I'm not going to navigate through that. This can go, you know, this wiring can go almost any path as long as it doesn't come into any contact with any other redstone uh, repeaters or redstone wiring. So I'm going to take a repeater and stick it there and I'm going to put some redstone wire here, okay? And then I'm also going to take a lighten of redstone here and I'm going to put Peter here just to you know lengthen boost the signal. Three one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve. There we go. And I'm gonna put another one here just to keep it a one way signal. This is more out of preference than anything else. And then this has to go into this here. So let's put this like so uh, like, uh, well, let's see, yeah, yeah, like that, yeah, and like that as well. So what I'm going to do is, this has redstone torch go here, this one has redstone torch here, that turns this one off. So when this one turns off, that one's, this one turns on and this one receives power, okay? So let's go ahead and connect this. this and we'll connect it up around here I'll get rid of these blocks here I'm gonna hard power this one and give myself a redstone wire like that's so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so it's under 15 under 14 blocks of redstone dust so that's perfectly fine so now we should be hooked up Okay, now what am I going to do here? I am just, I'm going to take this as a demo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little lever. This only for testing purposes is completely temporary. So I'm going to take a, actually, you know what? No, I'm not going to take a lever. don't need that. What am I doing? Uh, let me go and get my minecarts. I'm going to take my rail up, swap in a single minecart with a chest in it. Okay. Put that on there and let's see here where is that hooked up that's going over to station number one that's perfect i don't want to go anywhere else and i'm going to go ahead and get an item from here this is for this is how we test this out okay i can give myself a ticket oh actually i'm gonna get myself a block of boards put that in there there it goes goes off the there and there we go it turned off so now I can go and check here get my block of quartz back and get rid of this one okay so that's great so that means that that sh this should be set so let's see here we have this all set up and if we go over here you can see that this is already set up as I mentioned before this looks a little bit different but it does the same thing it's the, the main thing is the concept is the same so if you follow that the set of instructions you'll do just fine okay uh, in this case it looks like I brought the 
uh, latch a little bit out this way. So main thing is you understand what you're doing. Some changes here that we have to this, made to the design after this a little bit more testing. Uh, just to show you that we're going to need some uh, power rail that goes all the way down to the base here as well as power rail that goes across the item filters. I guess this is something new in 1.13. So mind you, I've been building this design, uh, coming up with it for the, over the past couple of years, which means that it's been going over several different updates. So as the updates come along, you come up with new things that you have to add to this design. That's only one downside to it because it's a little bit more uh, involved in terms of redstone and rails. So there have always been different, different quirks with minecarts and their mechanics, including minecarts that go through uh, solid blocks and minecarts that go through other minecarts. Also what I did here, I also made it so that the top here, we have two regular rails as well as a third regular rail over here. So one, two, three regular rails and one powered rail. This is going to be a powered rail here and that's of a regular rail. So that we get pushed right into down at this regular rail here and then this comes up to pick it up. Again, you have the power as usual. This is the same. And then again, or also over here, you have the same situation here. But in this case, you have it feeding off the ramp on this side. So let's go ahead and try this out. So I have it right now set to go to station number one. So I'm going to go ahead and change this so that we have it going to station number two. So let's flip the switch here. And that's going to make it go to space station number two and three, the other intersection. I want it to go to station number one. So let's go ahead and turn this one off and then put our train in place. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and put station number one in here, even though it's switched for station number two and three, and off it goes. There you go, it switched to station number one. And if you look in the front cart, there's your ticket returned to the lead cart. Now let's say we want to go to station number two and three. So let's take this here and we're going to put your cart someplace. Okay, so we're ready to go to station number two and three. So let's take, uh, let's see where it's going right now first. Uh, it's going to be, it's aimed at station number two. Uh, I want it to go to station, I want to aim this to station three. So let's go ahead and um, just for demo here, I'm going to switch this. Uh, was it this one? Oh no, sorry, this one. Switch this one here. There we go. And now it's going to be going to station three, but I want to go to station two. Okay. And this one is going to station one. So let's go to station two. So station number two, keeping in mind that this switching mechanism, this rail is switched to, to go to station number one. And this rail is switched to go to station three, but we want it to go that side, station two, right? So here we go. Station number two. Let's try this out. There it goes up and over. Station number two and three. Off it goes. Up and over. And there it goes, station number two. So it just we just gave it the decision over there to go to station number two over here. And it just crossed over two intersections without us having to push any buttons. This is super convenient, especially when you're going over long maps and you want to just AFK when you're going over this. It also helps to decentralize the rail systems. Many, modern, many rail systems in Minecraft are typically centralized or they, they basically can't cross over multiple intersections without having to stop to make a decision by the player uh, if, they are, if they are decentralized. So in this case, it's both automated and decentralized. Typically, before this, you could only have either automated with being centralized or manual control and completely decentralized if you wanted to be able to switch rails at multiple intersections. That's the only way that you were able to do so. Now let's try this scenario for station number three. So from our previous trial, we had this rail switched so it's stuck to go to 
station number two instead of station three. Now over here, previously it was going that way. I rigged it so that it goes to station number one instead. So that way it's forced to demonstrate that this switches. Okay. So let's go ahead and it's not, well, not rigged, but I basically just reset it to go to station number one. So let's go station number three. We're going to hit our lever. Let go. It's up and over. Stops and waits for the ticket to return. Goes back. There goes to station two and three at that intersection. Now it's going to come over to this side, up and over. Waits for the ticket to come back. And it goes to station number three. There you go. Okay, so let's test this without any rigging. Now, I did a couple of tests before, and there was some funny behavior that was happening. It ended up with some phantom minecarts. The game froze. It was really weird. I think it has to do with uh, 1.13 and them still working out the bugs. Hopefully, that gets fixed sometime soon. But, uh, yeah, that's this should uh, work okay. As we so here, this is set for station well, number 2 and 3, and this was set to go to station number two okay so let's go ahead and do this here so we're gonna go one at a time in order so let's go station or let's let's try random what the heck let's try random uh let's go station number three station number three uh no no you know station number two just to show that it'll actually work even though okay station number two let's go station number two and launch Turn this one off. All goes up and over. And there it goes over to that side. So quickly, let's get another train. And here. So that was going to station number two. Remember that. Station two. Is it going? There it goes. Station number two. Okay. Now let's go to uh, station number one. Let's go to station number one. Like that. And let's get another train. Here, one, two, three, and this is gonna. There it goes. Station number one. Let's go to station number three. There we go. So this is completely all the information is in the train itself. So this is self-contained. Station number three. There it goes. Up and over. And there you go. So all three of our stations have had their trains, which were assigned to go to them, end up at the proper destination. So we have station number one over here. Where's your ticket? Station number one. There you go. Let's go over here. Station number two over here. What's your ticket? Station number two. Station number three over here. What's your ticket? Station number three. There we go. So you can see this works and especially it is very, very good over very long distances. If you have a very huge, huge map, even in survival, like using materials that you can get in survival, right? Uh, and this is eventually gonna get a little bit more complex as we go along. This is uh, this can be used over long distances. So this proof of concept that's there, and also it's best to be used over multiplayer servers. Which brings us to our next topic for our next tutorial, and that has to do with what happens if you have one minecart train that comes down here, goes over the binary brain, comes up and over the ramp and sits here waiting for the ticket to be returned while another minecart train is hot on seals. Well, that's going to be a bit of a problem because if this other minecart train doesn't stop, it's going to go over the binary brain, change the rail switching mechanism according to where it needs to go, and it's either going to crash into this train or both trains are going to go into the same direction as the second train is intended to even if the first train needs to go in the other direction so do look forward to the next tutorial where we're going to discuss on how to prevent the first minecart train and the second minecart train from clashing with each other 
or from interfering with each other's destinations. I uh, hope you guys have found this informative and you'll be able to use this in your future bills. And please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notifications button. This is Check the Effects signing off. I will see you in the next video. Peace.